I think we all can agree that Naruto, when he finally decides to become one with his tailed beast, he looks epic. I think we all can admit that. But let's not forget there's other tailed beast hosts or one can say Jin Chiriki out there. Beings that have a tailed beast within them can use their power and combine to become one and stuff. Killer B is such a being. There's this being known as Kisame, right? A member of the Kakatsuki that has a sword that he can literally become one with and become like shark-like. He has a hex ability to be able to drain your chakra or eat it literally to become stronger or help him. Or if he gets injured, he can steal your chakra and help himself heal faster, stuff like that. Tell me why he absorbs so much of Killer B's chakra or the eight tails that when Kisame unfused with the sword, since the sword is a living entity, it has its own personality. It actually turned against Kisame, who was his former master, and started hurting Kisame. It actually became attached to Killer B and started giving Killer B his chakra back, and it made Kisame mad. <laughs> That's freaking Killer B for you. Kind of similar to Naruto. I mean, I know the show's called Naruto, and I know the show is filled with a whole bunch of super ninjas. And Naruto, the main character's goal was to become a Hokage of his own individual village, but let's not forget there's other villages out there that have their own president or one can say leaders of the ninja nations. Kage's, Hokage's, the one for the Leaf Village, Rei Kage's, other village, and different names, Mizukage and all the other stuff for other villages, and different names, Kage's, you get it? Killer B is an interesting character because he's a great fighter, he's a ninja that has an unorthodox fighting style because he can use blades, I'm talking about a lot of different blades at the same time while fighting you, he would even throw blades if he has to, so he's good with blades and just swords, bladed objects and stuff while at the same time you also have to worry about him mixing in some of his combos by transforming into a tail beast in different cloaked modes and stuff i mean you already know he's a swordsman but he got another sword thanks to kasami's sword changing sides he has an alive sword basically that each chakra now when they was fighting itachi zombified versions of the characters that used to be alive Ido tensei itachi use fire styled attacks killer beat uses his new sword in combat that can absorb chakra you know, he's a swordsman, but he also has a new one that can absorb energy. Mixing this stuff in in combat helps a lot. Having all this ninja skills, but he still wants to be a rapper. Isn't that funny? One can look at it since he's got a tail beast inside of him. And he's the host of it. He has two sets of chakra he can pull from his own cell. He can pull some from the tail beast if he wish. See, in the Naruto universe, some of the mightiest beings are these creatures known as the, the tailed beast. Like, each beast literally has a tail to represent themselves. Like, you got the one tail, it goes all the way up to four, eight, which is the one I'm going over in this video. Eight tailed beasts, killer bees. You got the nine tails, then it stops at that. All these beings used to be one being. The ten tails, an ultimate crazy powerful entity. There's been different hosts for these beings over the years. Killer bee is the current host of this eight tailed beast currently. Power levels seem to go by the number of tails they have. Since the nine-tailed fox is the last tail, of course, one could say he's the strongest tailed beast. But the second is eight tails. The killer beast literally eight tails. They even say, going by the number of tails, he should be the next to the strongest. It's a case like this with Kisame even implying that he's the second strongest tailed beast and he lives up to the name only being one less than nine tails when it comes to his might. Believe it or not, there was a time where Killer B and the eight tails wasn't in sync with one another and they used to go berserk from time to time. But just like Naruto, he's got a relationship with this beast so they can kind of work hand in hand now. It shows the progress a character can make from when they're young all the way to when they grow up. I'm going to get back to the eight tails in two seconds, but Killer B can do lightning style ninja art that allow him to throw this pencil with lightning aura around it that can penetrate trees. They talk about it right here, a pencil whose penetrating power has been enhanced via high frequency generated by the Raishan. So the blades he used, he can actually put lightning around his blades because mixing in that lightning with his swordsmanship is a deadly combo. He's one of those characters that have mental fortitude because not even women can distract him. Well, unless you're an older woman like Tsunade or whatever. <laughs> Well, there's certain times he can't really pay attention if they're ridiculously hot, I guess. <laughs> Women, let me stop. In the Naruto world, there's a lot of ninja trickery. One of their trickery attacks being this thing known as Genjutsu. You got Genjutsu, Taijutsu, and Ninjutsu. And Ninjutsu is basically like blast power type, elemental control type stuff. Genjutsu is basically messing with your mind, illusions, making you see stuff that's not really there, and keeping you frozen in place to where you can't defend yourself. But since Killer B is basically two entities in one, if he gets caught in a Genjutsu or an illusion, he can actually counter such things thanks to him having a partner. Genjutsu doesn't work especially when they have control over their tailed beast because his partner can just agitate his chakra and wake him up. I mean, think about it. If Itachi's Genjutsu won't work and his tail beast will just wake him up from that, then don't even try illusions on him. That kind of stuff just ain't gonna fly. So yeah, no mind manipulation or trying to trap him in illusions. 
Killer B has such good control over his tail beast form is that when he got hit with the black flames, right, Sasuke did to him, you know the eternal flames that will not stop burning until the target is extinguished, that flame, Sasuke managed to cut off one of Killer B's tails, right, with his lightning blade style techniques, right, so Sasuke thought he did it, right, thought he was burning Killer B, right, Killer B has such control that this piece of his tail is actually the real Killer B that fell and sunk, and all of this right here you see Killer B screaming is not even the real him, but instead it was a fake, the real Killer B got sunk, and it was actually that tail the whole time, the one that sunk, the Sharingan couldn't tell the difference apparently, and was able to fool him. He lost several limbs so he could get away. Respect his control over the tail bees. It's pretty self-explanatory when he looks like this, right? But the scary part about him is that he can change form at will. Like, for example, a piece of the tail beast can be coming out from any limb of him at any time to attack you. He can simply cloak himself in the tailed beast forms like this and can look like this like imagine having to deal with all of this mess but he's a small human with sword skills that can use lightning like that's a lot of different things coming at you i mean he has such control over it i mean look how he can like make literal tail tentacles while he's still in a humanoid form how he has his swords out but you can see the tail beast behind him he can partially transform and can move all this debris precisely to stack it up to show his control the Kotsky members call him the epitome of Jinchiriki because of his massive control so one can look at his different forms like this his base form he will slightly power up and make a cloak around himself to clothesline you they call, they call it the lariat in this form he's even more powered up than ever increasing his physical strikes and stuff and then this is when he gets in really scary just run if you see him go like this and then completely run away if you see him go into the full tail beast mode let's get on how strong he is I wasn't playing when I said he would literally clothesline you. His tail beast kind of is an octopus. They even say the word octopus because he can spit out ink. <laughs> he can use tail beast stuff like even blasting ink. Thanks to him and his tail beast, he can produce enough ink to where he can cover a vast area, even if it's a mountain-sized area of effect. That's how much ink he can produce. He has this ink doppelganger technique, a ceiling jutsu octopus hold technique. Yeah, ink that will hold you down that's pretty epic along with being able to produce lightning type stuff to get an understanding of his strength even in his base state beings like jugo try to blitz him and hits him this hard to cause this much impact literally strong enough to catch this big old sword with his bare hands get this sword out of his face he says not only that he's strong enough to take him out off panel got his sword this big old sword by the way when Sasuke tries to blitz him, he can move this big old sword with strength and speed to block these kind of attacks and swing it around to kind of show his strength. Also, to give you more of an understanding of his power level, look who he's fighting, Sasuke himself. This is Sasuke during his weaker days, of course. Sasuke even attempts to kick him and Killer B doesn't even freaking flinch, guys. And Killer B is holding back pretty much 100% of his power, even though he took that kick like it's nothing and he's writing rhymes down. I briefly mentioned his sword play, but let's get back to the sword play. His sword play is so crazy. When you mix this along with his ability to just straight up speed blitz you, Killer B does this to a Sasuke that has a shrine guy. And he's so, he's putting so much pressure on Sasuke. Sasuke is literally on the heels. As you can see, despite him using the shrine guy, it's just too much speed and pushes him back. It's literally stated you can barely read his line of attack. Another way to understand their speed, two of the fastest beings, Naruto and his Chakamoto and Rikage, Killer B was able to intercept a blitz it kind of shows that he's definitely a fast ninja this is a good occasion if you can get an understanding of his fighting speed and sword play put together chopping up all these shurikens and deflecting them with his sword style you know his fighting speed is fast when you can put pressure on itachi like this when it comes to blitzing and he can also counter your lightning style chakra attacks like i already mentioned yes he can counter that and also mess you up this bad so fast and strong to the point where even sasuke had to get saved because he was about to do the finishing blow yeah even when you block his attack with his sword, he can make his sword strikes even stronger with lightning stuff to the point where you can see him literally cutting through the sword. His body can withstand attack. Yeah, powered up attack. This is probably because of the Jinchuriki basically being one with him. It gives him extra durability to withstand full-blown blows like this. To cause all of this destruction, caving in the concrete. Matter of fact, Killer B is so mighty, even when they're ganging up on him and he is getting hit from all angles he was basically doing all of this in base form until of course he decided to actually summon up some power in this occasion with the rikage you can see his strength he literally close lines the rikage in this occasion he actually overpowers him and pushes him backwards with his strength causing all this collateral there's implications that in this occasion he didn't have to even pull out no tail beast or cloaks to overpower these giant bears talking about he's the top dog for a reason this is ridiculous 
this is kind of like a training exercise. You know how Naruto did this by accident in his first series when he was younger, when he used to get berserk and he used to do this by accident. Killer B's actually doing this on purpose because he has full control, powered up, everything about him, speed, strength, and everything just went up through the roof. That's why you can get an idea of his striking power. In this occasion, when he's blitzing, he lands and calls all of this. This is like dang near building shattering type stuff from the impact. You see the rocks and debris falling. This is before Sasuke had Suzano and stuff, so his defense was kind of not that great because he thought he was going to catch him in a genjutsu and call it a day. And then basically one could say gets one shot clotheslines. And it was like basically a lethal injury one shot style type thing. Like he was down, chest busted open. I mean, what do you expect when you're clotheslined with the force to level buildings? Against Akatsuki members like Kisame, for example, he even headbutted him in his cloaked state. But of course, you know, Kasame can absorb chakra and stuff. So that kind of backfired. We saw what he did to Sasuke in this cloaked state. When he powers up to this state, yeah, this much power, he does a lariat clothesline wrestling type move to this being known as Kisame. He's a being that has a sword that eats chakra, and despite this sword being able to eat chakra, despite him trying to nullify some of the force, this lariat was still able to produce so much power, even though his power got a lot of it got sucked away. One attack was still able to pretty much bust the chest open of Kisame, but it did revert him back down a, a power level or two or stage. But I gotta admit, this is one of the few times Killer B actually got done in because this dude was kind of cheating, absorbing chakra. This is another occasion of him showing that he's on that level with Rikage, of course. They do a lariat and take his head off. Combination of their strength and speed. Just in their cloak form, they can bust chests open and take heads off. You know what I mean? I mean, sure, the eight tails in his full glory is big, but he's way stronger than what his size would suggest. And that's the part that's scary because even things that are as big as him, they still get messed up physically. Note the self for squids. The eight tails would just physically beat you up with his fists because him and the beast are one. When it comes to physical might in this particular occasion, he's strong enough to like literally spin his whole body or tails or tentacles around to make his own wide radius twister. Like what the heck? Look how the places or areas in the distance look in comparison to all this he's producing. Blowing everybody away. Look at the amount of bullcrap he was able to blow away. One can say with just a wave of his hand, he can just clear out an entire town. I mean, Killer B, fully transformed, is not even scared to punch the shell of the Tentail itself, the Guido statue, showing he does not give no craps about who he punches. Even in anime, they imply shockwaves when he hits stuff. Every Tail Beast can do their own form of blast power called the Tail Beast Bomb. Killer B, when he says, let me transform into my full form, can do this same blast or bomb as well. This is the kind of power... At will, Killer B can just charge up and blast with. His energy blasts can do big type of explosions like this. I mean, Killer B's big himself, but look how much of an impact that does with blast power. Creating a big explosion messing up the surrounding area. His blast was so mighty that even when they were trying to use water style protection to protect themselves from this blast, this being right here helped try to defend it because he had advantage based on the area because it was mostly water in the area. This blast, despite him being in his home field advantage, seemed to took a lot out of him. So if Killer B wanted to, he can say, let me use an energy blast and blast away all these mountains if he felt like it. When he goes full-blown eight tails, tail beast mode, he doesn't really like to go to this mode, especially if his people that he likes are in the environment because he can just blow up the entire battlefield and that would cause damage to the people he cares about. So he can't just go to this mode every time because of his blast power. You guys already know how I mentioned Killer B's a swordsman. He has this new sword that can absorb energy. In this occasion, Itachi shot multiple fire at him. He can use his tail beast abilities to mix in his normal mode with his tail beast to block otherwise harmful attacks by literally blocking it with his tail beast arm, like hybriding his different forms together for defense and offense. I would like to add that fire or heat isn't an end-all be-all. He can resist certain things, but it does cause discomfort though. I mean, we've seen Killer B get completely slammed, like even in Transform State by other tail beasts before, and able to continue fighting after that. We've seen him physically put his tentacles around other tail beasts like Four Tails, you see, in this angle, he's restraining the four tails. And since Killer B is the second strongest, look at how when other tail beasts do their blasts, tail beasts that are lower tails, when it comes to tail count, they're lower numbers than him. Their blast can still produce mountain shattering force with their blasts. So pretty much even the lowest number of tail beasts can destroy mountains easily. I mean, look at this explosion compared to these mountain range. You see what I'm saying? He's one of those characters that can kind of spam tail beast bombs, which is actually scary. Like imagine him spamming one mountain shattering attack, one other mountain shattering attack, another one and another one all back to back. By the way, his body's really resilient too, because even if he gets hit with his own tail beast bomb directly, he will not instantly just die. Even being hit by one 
directly so his durability matches up with his blast power i mean when he's fighting other tailed beasts he's literally working together with naruto them two holding their own against multiple tailed beasts that are being controlled of course and this is what happens when all the tailed beasts work together to make a giant crap tailed beast bomb against naruto naruto by himself canceled that out and together they made a ginormous chakra tail beast bomb type of an explosion working together with naruto killer b and naruto working together can make a tail beast blast together where one can say they could level islands probably even hundreds of mountains when you see the size of the explosion i mean just think about it when naruto was in weaker states in his six tailed cloaked up state that's nowhere near as strong as his form now or in his golden state they were still able to make big type of destructive capacity type of blast like this that dwarf mountains i'm convinced what a blast killer b could technically just destroy an entire island hundreds of mountains blah 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 don't ask but they actually had to get in a fight with the ten tails yeah i know that's crazy right he does like a beam struggle both of their tail beast bombs are apparently clashing right here and look how close he is to the radius killer b in his transformed state was close to all of this madness and had to withstand that at point blank range damaged him but yeah he withstood it though when it comes to speed, we know Killer Bee's pretty fast to be able to blitz up Sasuke that had the Sharingan, and characters without the Sharingan can react faster than sound. A good example being Tamari, even as a kid, can react to sound-based attacks and blow the sound away, and she's probably way faster than this as an adult, and she's nowhere near as fast as Killer Bee. Killer Bee, when he's not in his bulked-up form, his speed has to be somewhere comparable to this Naruto in this state, who had Reikage-esque level speed. Minato, a teleporter, Reikage speed used to be compared to a teleporter-type character. Matter of fact, when Re Kage and Killer B do their lariat, they quote unquote state that their speed has to be close to the speed of light, apparently. So if he can attack you at close to the speed of light levels as his lariat weaker form like this, how fast is Killer B when he enters a higher form when it comes to his speed if this is apparently close to the speed of light based on data books? Because we know for a fact this one's even faster and stronger. Adding on top of the fact when Naruto was in his chakra mode, not this mode, him and Naruto had their fair share of team ups when they was fighting different Jinchuriki and stuff and they was able to hold his ground and he wasn't being blitzed not to mention they was literally outnumbered not to mention these tail beasts can kind of put pressure on naruto in his chakra mode without being like slow pokes in comparison to his speed we've seen killer b clash with beings that can give naruto in his chakra mode some issues you know jinchurikis they had to fight together to show their speed and power have to be somewhere similar or he will be basically dead weight like notice right here how he's able to react and clash blows with beings like this but this being for example has tail beasts inside of her as well so yeah all this stuff put together a tail beast swordsman that can use a whole bunch of swords at the same time is a scary combination how strong do you think killer b is do you think he's stronger than the third rikage you think if him and itachi got in a fight you think he has a good chance at beating him i kind of want to hear you guys' opinion on it he has plenty of narrative and writer intent for the writers to want him to be the second mightiest tail beast in jiriki level being behind naruto himself it wouldn't make sense for him not to be top tier until we talk about like Kaguya family members that keep on spawning in the new series. Then he's not on par with them. But like before all the main villains started being Kaguya level or above, he was pretty top tier in the verse. But yeah, they, they kept on introducing God alien level beings like this over and over again. So what do you expect? Do you think he's actually close to the speed of light like these data books say or do you think they're lying? I think if they wanted to do major damage and they punched the ground really hard, I think they could cause devastating craters in the ground with their raw power output, either with a punch or a tail beast blast. I'm thinking they got the strength or blast the power to split an island right down the middle like this is common knowledge we know the nine tails is above the eight tails but the killer b is literally one tail below him like he's at eight tails naruto's the nine tails one can argue that killer b's potential is even greater considering that he's right below the nine tails a being in handbooks that stated they have the power to turn the world into ash i would have thought this is an exaggeration if we haven't seen naruto face beings that can literally slice the entirety of the moon in half this is the type of stuff Naruto has to compete against in later arcs, of course. So this kind of does add up with that statement about them having that kind of power, destroying planetoid type of power, slicing planetoid type of power. All that kind of stuff adds up context clues wise. Like I'm not saying he can necessarily do anything the Nine Tails can do, but he's right below that. Like planetoids do vary in size, of course. Like even if you don't want to say Killer Bee's up there with Naruto completely to the point where he could destroy Earth's moon or something. What if he can destroy a smaller planetoid like maybe Pluto or something? Who knows? There's implication that Killer Bee could have the blast power to level an entire country or multiple countries at least if you don't want to say you can level the entirety of the moon that still would be impressive just leveling one continent or having the blast power to tremble or wipe out multiple continents or just one continent or one country for that matter you know what do you think though what do you think his limits are do you guys respect killer b i hope you do but before i get going I gotta give a quick shout out to those that have donated to the channel. Respect this super ninja entity 
that's fused and became one with his tail beast. Thanks for the donations, guys. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys later.